like those of Rogers or Rogers TV. Welcome to Health Matters with your host, me, Dr. Lana Marconi. Tonight, we are going to explore energy medicine and look at energetic disturbances and alignment. Please feel free to call us with any questions that you have for our panel. The phone number is 905-595-LIVE. My first two guests have doctor diplomas in traditional Chinese medicine. Please help me to welcome uh, Robert Youngs and Zoran Jelasik. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you, Dr. Lange. Well, tonight's show is about energy, so I want to feel your energy, <laughs> and I want our viewers to feel your energy. Thank you. Okay, so TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, what is that an umbrella for? Well, traditional Chinese medicine is energy-based uh, medical system with uh, um, five modalities in it. So we have acupuncture, we have Chinese herbal medicine, we have Chinese manual medicine, which is a massage and joint manipulation. We have Chinese medical nutrition and, of course, Chinese medical qigong, which is a central modality. Yeah, so it's a huge umbrella. It Chinese is. Chinese medicine. Nice, nice. And Chinese medicine deals with the concept of qi, right? Yes. What <laughs> is qi? Well, <clears throat> the ancient uh, Chinese viewed everything in the universe mm -hmm. as having an underlying uh, reality, and they called that reality qi. And that she was in many different forms. So if we were to look at, say, water, right? Water, if you lower the vibrational uh, frequency of water, it becomes a solid. If you begin to heat it up again, then you have a liquid form of energy or a liquid form of substance. <clears throat> if you further heat it up, then it becomes like a vapor, right? So those three aspects of that energy actually relate to us in our, um, <clears throat> in our particular human form. So the physical form would be like the ice. Your chi or your energy like the water which moves, and your spirit, right, or consciousness like the vapor which is uh, a little more non-material. So there's different levels of chi, different dimensions of chi? Yeah, it, it's uh, chi will take on different forms, right, and, and if you like, uh, manifest in different ways. So those three different ways are like solid, like a, a liquid energy or moving energy, and then spirit, like a consciousness or, or um, <coughs> awareness, if you like. How vital is chi to our well-being? I mean, why should I even care about my chi? Well, <clears throat> chi is the vital en energy of the body, and without chi, our body is not going to function. So in order for us to function, we have to make sure we maintain a certain level of chi. So, so wait, if there's no chi, we're, we're you know... Well, if it <laughs> diminishes, then, then your, your, your functions are going to start to diminish, and that's going to affect us on all, all those three levels. So physically, it's going to... Uh, affect us on a physical level. Uh, if you like, energetically it affects us both emo emotionally and, and uh, um, intellectually. And then uh, it also affects us spiritually, our spiritual connection. So it's very important that we maintain this um, level of chi in order to function. Mm -hmm. If we were to uh, take in, let's say, more chi than we're going to use in order for us to function, then we would kind of build up a reservoir, right? Or a surplus. So in having that surplus then means that our body will last longer, so we'll have longevity. So of two aspects, one is to maintain our health and the other is to increase our longevity. Um, other important concepts in traditional Chinese medicine um, are meridians, points. Um, <coughs> so do you want to describe our energy system, what that is? Sure. Um, so meridians are these distinctive pathways that uh, qi uh, basically moves in through our body. Okay. Um, and along meridians, we have uh, a points. So it's akin to, let's like say... Like, do I have points on my hand? Of course. Uh, and they start from the top of your fingers, mm -hmm. and, they, and, and they move as we go by meridian. And then we have another meridian that usually follows from your body all the way to the end of extremities. And the points are following almost like a, a train stations alongside a railroad. So um, this chi itself has a polarity, and this polarity is expressed in the <coughs> young concept which we uh, later look in diagnostic way. So uh, we find out that um, the four basic diagnostic concepts in Chinese medicine are um, excess yang, excess yin, deficient yang, and deficient yin. So what does that look like? Because we're talking about energetic disturbances in a person. So if my yang is off or my yin is off or I'm excess or deficient, I mean, what am I going to experience? Well, in, in excess yang, for example, um, on a physical level, 
um, you have elevated blood pressure, you have elevated temperature. Emotionally, you're more excited, um, at times maybe even angry. Um, as opposed to that, uh, deficient yin, we have quite opposite. So we have withdrawn emotional state, we have a lower temperature, decreased blood pressure, and so on. Um, how do we know meridians are real? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's a good question. Um, uh, up to maybe 2005, uh -huh. we didn't have actually a proper scientific means to prove this. Okay. And in 2005, interesting research happened in Germany, led by uh, Dr. Albert Fritz Popp, who's a leading uh, world researcher in um, photobiology. Okay, and we have uh, an image of the, you're going to talk about this of research? Course. Okay, so we're going to post an image of uh, meridians right now in uh, Zoran is going to speak to this research. Of course. So what Dr. Uh, Pop uh, did with his uh, research um, assistants is they stimulated the body with the thermal agent that we call moxa, which is a rolled herb, and it's lighted, and it's uh, brought very close, a cu couple inches away from the acupuncture meridians. And on the first picture, we have uh, a stomach meridian, mm -hmm. and um, uh, this is uh, taken by a thermal imaging camera that um, basically measured this operating at 2.4 to 5 nanometer frequency. Mm -hmm. And on the second picture, we see both stomach and spleen meridians, they're like highlighted. So this was the first research actually to prove mm -hmm. beyond um, um, any scientific guessing that meridians are specific and real structures in the body where energy or chi moves through. This is so fascinating because how did, um, I mean, Chinese medicine uh, is at least 5,000 years old. So we have technology today that's showing that meridians are real. Um, it's like, you know, when, when people had cataracts, we never had the science to measure cataracts. Now we do, so we can say that there are cataracts. You know, science always takes a while to catch up. <laughs> but 5,000 years ago, I mean, how did people see meridians? Well, the underlining theory, and, and uh, currently uh, in traditional Chinese medicine cycle, uh, uh, circles, is that um, people were less dense energetically, and uh, they had something that we don't have today, which is infrasonic vision. So um, their eyes operated uh, probably on a lower frequency, something like 18 megahertz and lower. So we almost appear to them as, as a see-through structures. Mm -hmm. um, that's very interesting. Uh, Robert, I know, um, you know in TCM, emotions are a huge element in the relationship between emotions in organs, in the mm -hmm. flow of chi. Do you want to uh -huh. maybe speak to that? Because <coughs> I, I, you know, some sure. people with uh, liver problems, I know that's associated with anger or kidney issues. That's a lot of, uh, oftentimes associated with fear and trust issues. Mm -hmm. So, well, <coughs> uh, whether you have um, um, externally induced or uh, internally induced uh, emotional uh, disturbances, they begin to affect how <coughs> how our body functions, mm -hmm. and. The basic emotions, right, uh, are <coughs> either positive or, or negative. So if we have a negative emotion, it causes the chi to constrict and <coughs> not flowing and, and not functioning. Whereas uh, positive emotions cause the chi to expand. And so we look at uh, what we call the negative emotions, which would be, uh <coughs> you know, excess uh, excitement, right, mm -hmm. uh, anger. Uh, fear and shock, um, also... Um, what <coughs> are the emotions that are related to each organ? Oh, okay, so... Do you know the emotions of that course. are related? Of course. So, so the heart usually uh, should be either uh, joy or excess anger, so that's like the positive and negative aspect. And in liver, we, we either have, uh, um <coughs> the, as a negative emotion, you consider uh, anger, anger right? yes. resentment, uh, in terms of... Um, so that's how you know like someone has stagnated chi in their liver because they're angry? Or, s or in their yeah. heart, for example... Um, over excitement. So over they're going to get excitement, excitement and, and you know, their blood pressure rises. Like that. So you see that in their aggressive, right. more aggressive uh, Is behavior. laughter uh, an issue there too? Well, laughter, uh, laughter is more of an expression of joy, so that's more like a positive expression, right? Okay. Which we we're, we're simulate with that uh, particular emotion and it doesn't cause us any particular What about the lungs? Along store the uh, grief and uh, sadness mm -hmm. if they're if they're depressed, right? And uh, if they're not depressed, then uh, it uh, allows for uh, a true feeling of wellness, really. And a courage as well. And courage, yeah. And the spleen and the stomach. I mean, you can go spleen on and on. Spleen and stomach, with each organ. Uh, yeah. Worry, uh, you know, worry and concerns bother the uh, 
bother to explain, and uh, positive emotions are more like, um, you know, acceptance. acceptance right? So if someone comes to you and they have, let's say, uh, a deficiency in their kidney uh, chi or their yin or yang, um, and they have a closed heart, <laughs> how does that work? <laughs> how, I mean, what do you do to balance that? Well, to balance it, there are several ways in which, uh, which I work with uh, as Qigong therapy and then balancing uh, the energy. One is to uh, teach them basic uh, Qigong exercises. And these Qigong exercises would focus on... <coughs> this is medical Qigong? I'm talking about medical Qigong to address a specific uh, uh, condition. So in addressing the uh, condition, uh, we're going to use things like um, visualization, imagination, and prayer. Okay, so give me an example, like a case. A case where somebody has... Yeah. Uh, or just give me an example of somebody with a problem and how you would help them. How I would help them was, first of all, taken through maybe what I call five steps of healing. Okay. So those five steps of healing would first would teach them what I call deep breathing exercise. Because if you like, the deep breathing exercise is bringing the chi back into the body. And the chi acts as a mediator. Therefore, it's bringing, if you like, our mind, our spirit, our consciousness, which contains our emotions back into the body. So deep breathing exercises... Um, would be used to create more body awareness. Can you give me an example? Like how would you breathe? Yeah, so if you imagine taking a breath in through your nose, right? And instead of filling, say, your lungs, imagine you take this breath in, you imagine your abdomen, lower abdomen filling first, right? Deeper breath, then it, then it reaches your, your diaphragm, eventually your lungs, and then you exhale in the reverse direction, so from the, uh, from the lower abdomen through the diaphragm out through the nose. And what this does, it has a calming effect upon the uh, of the emotions because it, bring, it brings, if you like, our mind or spirit right. back into our body. And that's the first stage of the healing that's process? That's the first stage. After that, <clears throat> you know, using uh, Qigong exercises would be to use visualization, imagination, what's called dynamic movement, so body movement exercise. And as that Qi is led by the, by the mind and the movement of our, uh, of our limbs, it creates a, a cellular activity which begins to stimulate chi, if you like, to all the organ systems throughout our, our, our body and different meridian systems. Do you practice this as well? Of course. Um, I uh, study and, and we work together in a hospital for many years as uh, traditional Chinese medicine practitioners. Um, and we use this on a number of our trauma patients in, uh, in the hospital St. John's Rehab Hospital in North York. Um, so it's it's very effective method because not only oxygenation of the tissue calms the uh, parasympathetic mind, but uh, visualization also. Soren, I'm going to put you on hold for just un momento. <laughs> Please, we need to take a break. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll be right back on Health Matters and more with Zorn and Robert, and we're going to learn more about energy medicine and TCM. We'll be right back.
The opinions expressed in the following program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers or Rogers TV. Welcome back to Health Matters, and we're talking with Zorin and Robert, uh, practitioners of TCM, and learning about energy, really. Um, Robert, you were talking about stages of healing, um, yes. so let's explore that a bit further and look at, perhaps uh, go through some of the organs and maybe the sound vibrations that you would use. Yeah, take, so me th take me through a healing process. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> if we have, let's say, uh, what we were talking about before, a negative emotion, its effect is to compress the chi, right? Cause chi and so if I'm stagnation. angry, my chi is just like yeah, this. Yeah, so everybody feels this, they're all constricted, they're in there, right? And then they explode with the, with the excess energy. Sure. So we use uh, some methods, well some methods are used what's called the six healing sounds. Okay. Which means that for each particular organ, there's a particular sound which has a vibration that will stimulate that organ, move chi through that system. And so that's one way to release the stagnant chi. So a, a specific sound which has a vibration that's tuned, if you like, to that particular organ. Okay. And, um, and are you going to demonstrate a sound? Yeah, we can do it. We can do some sounds. Okay. So if we start, let's say, with the liver, because liver is like the first uh, organ to get uh, emotionally involved, really, because that's our it's our trigger for our anger. So what we would do is we'd have the uh, person first to start with the deep breathing exercise, and then to focus actually on the anatomical location of their liver, and then they're going to inhale, taking this breath, and then when they release the breath. I'm going to ask them to focus on a particular sound. So if I was doing the liver, we could all this, sorry. Just put your hands on your liver. You make a deep breath, right? Breathing in until you feel the actual organ itself or its, or its location. When you make the sound, the sound would be shoo. So as Robert makes the sound, we visualize on the liver as an organ. We visualize the green healing color of the liver. And as the Robert makes the sound, the, uh, the vibratory, um, 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 vibrations from the voice box move through the specific frequency and uh, by Chinese traditional uh, med uh, medical uh, theory they relax the liver tissue and they release excess energy in it. So you're using sound vibration you Sound heal. vibration and there would also be a little more dynamics mm -hmm. to the exercise because uh, there's the internal relationship between the organ and, and its uh, meridian and its opening so the, the liver actually opens to the eyes. So when the patient would start ma by making this So someone sound, with eye problems is it well, because, the, it of, would the, help, is it because yeah. of the yeah. liver? So it, this it is some help. stagnation within the liver. Yeah, because so, of the anger? Yeah, so if they're yeah. making this particular sound, as they, they inhale, right, their eyes would be closed. Mm -hmm. As they exhale, they would open, open their eyes, open their mouth to uh, allow the sound to come out, and feel the vibration in the, in the organ, traveling up, if you like, to the eyes, and then coming out through the mouth to disperse And that's this. to clear the anger. You know what, this is really interesting because what this brings up for me is um, the work by uh, Greg Braden. I don't know if you know yes, him. He's I a do. huge yes. author, scientist, yeah. and um, he published a book called uh, The Divine Matrix. And uh, he did a talk in Italy and he shows uh, part of this clip about um, a medicineless hospital in Beijing. And there was this woman who had bladder cancer, and um, she was from the West here, and nobody could help her, so she went to Beijing to this medicineless clinic, and there's three practitioners. She had a tumor. Uh, it was like three inches in diameter. And the three practitioners uh, used chanting, uh, yes. focused their intent uh, and their emotion, and through the um, sonogram, or the, uh, you could see the tumor shrinking in three minutes. I'm familiar with it. Pretty much what you're talking about. Well, that, that's it. That's that's using uh, actually some so external chi yeah. projection from the uh, qigong masters that we're working on, and then the patient themselves using their own visualization, right, and uh, their intention to disperse the energy. So the mind, really, right, the mind is the um, director of chi. So the mind directs the chi. Yeah. So we have chi in our body. We have the organs hold it, but without the mind and its intent, right. Mm -hmm it would be uh, chaotic. What's the sound for kidney? Because I know kidneys are, you know, um, like the battery pack in Chinese medicine, yeah. so to speak. That's where what your pre, prenatal yeah, jing is stored, and if we use that up, then... <laughs> well, yeah, the, the kidneys are like the source energy for the body. And not that they're inherited energy, so really we think the inherited energy of the kidneys, is, you can think of as all your ancestral energies are, are there to support your, you. Yeah, yeah so if form you maintain DNA it, energy if you don't, that we carry with us. 
if you don't like, let's say, you know, you're uh, bombarded with a lot of negative emotions, you start to internalize, right, and act in that way. Yeah. So that's how our mind, if you like, right, affects our emotion, and then I internally that compresses or suppresses our chi. So, so the, what would be the sound for the kidney? So the sound for the ki kidneys would be uh, like this. Again, you would, you'd focus on the, on the kidney. Same, yeah. same uh, preparation. The patient or, uh, would, Im would imagine breathing deeply right into their, their uh, lower dantian, having their hands over their kidneys, and beginning to focus on the kidney uh, organs themselves. And as they begin to release the sound, same thing, the eyes open to release the, the energy. And the sound is like this. It, Shri. And while the Robert is doing this, the patient is also visualizing the color of the kidney because What's the color of the kidney? it's it's usually indigo blue or black, and that basically purges the sort of negative emotion the kidneys emit, which is fear in this case, and uh, it strengthens the positive emotion, which is willpower, willpower. in the kidneys. Yes. Yeah. So. Uh, in Chinese medicine, is it that you know emotions come before the disease? No. So we have to look at <coughs> uh, kind of three aspects of ourselves when you call uh, uh, Jing, Qi, and Shen, right? So the Jing is uh, is the essence or that which makes up physical form, right? So that's going to be uh, our function, how our organs function, and the second is Qi or the energy within the body, right? So not enough chi, right? Too much chi, excess, right? So we, well, I'm just going to cut you up for one second. If someone is, um, if their chi is balanced, what does that look like? Well, if they're balanced, then they should be uh, you know, in a more harmonious state. That, that's what the whole a aspect of uh, being in balance is, is that your organs function pop properly, you feel invigorated, you have enough energy, right? And your, your emotions, right, are balanced, as well as also your, your intellect, so clear thinking. And then we would say we would have the zest for life, whereas if there's a negative effect, it starts to work on all of these three levels. So the uh, level of um, <coughs> spirit, right, right, would have to do with this emotions, mental clarity, and our spiritual nature, our, you know, our zest for life, if you like. Any one of these three, yeah. right, which are affected. So if we're, affected, we're suppressed by negative emotion, we're oppressed, if you like, on a Shen disturbance. If we don't take the proper nutrients, we don't get enough Qi, so we're suppressed on the Qi level, right? If we over abuse our bodies, right, to uh, excess, uh, you know, physical activities, uh, mm -hmm. too much childbearing, then we're going to affect the physical level. So whichever level is affected, the other two in turn are affected. Okay. Um, you, you know the movie What the Bleep Do We Know? They yes. talk about emotions a lot right. and how most people are stuck in stimulus response and because they are, um, they're just experiencing that same emotion even though it's through like maybe through different people or different events. They're kind of like in an emotional plateau so they're not really experiencing you know the levels of joy um, or happiness that really is their birthright. Yeah. They're really stuck. So are, are the emotion, if someone's angry, is that a clue for them that oh there's something wrong with my, or there's going to be something wrong with my liver or if I'm in fear mode, um, you know, is my kidney going to be acting up? Well, generally, it, it's it's seen as a chi stagnation level where the, we cycle through one and same emotion, and uh, if that persists for a longer period of time, weeks and, and months, then we see a deeper level pathology in China, energetic pathology, which is a blood stagnation, and that starts affecting organs more. So we see interplay between physical, mental, and spiritual. Okay. So if, for example, we see uh, kidneys as an example, so if we have continuously cycling through a fear as emotion, we start physically experiencing lower back pain, knee pain. We withdraw from enjoying the life. Yeah. Psychologically, we don't have will to do things. We socially um, uh, alienate ourselves from the uh, society at large. So this is a progression if nothing is done. Well, yeah. I like your sounds. <laughs> Give me a sound for the lung. Oh, the lung is probably the most difficult sound to make, right? So, so this is a <laughs> of course that's why I yeah. picked it. <laughs> well, the lung sound, right? the lung sound is, uh, you know, it goes through the same routine, right? Focusing, uh, you know, where the breath is to, uh, to be uh, released from in terms of that organ, and then the tongue will go against the back of the tooth, and it sounds like this. It's kind of like shooing a baby, right? Mm -hmm. But it's a. And what's the emotion re related to the lung? So this is uh, usually, usually grief and despair. Grief and despair. Yeah. And okay. if you can think, it's it's like a wind sound, right? So the lungs are the closest to the outside. You can think, right? So we bring in all the yeah. the energy or the or the you know uh, 
chi w into the lungs. We absorb that ne negative energy. It's like a wind that enters into the lungs. So the sound is like a vibrating the organ and allowing that wind to escape. Right, it, as opposed to keeping our emotions stuck uh, in, our, in our organs. Yeah, right? of course. And then that stagnates the blood. That stagnates the blood. And we would also visualize the white color or sometimes um, metallic color, and that's the color of the lung. So we release, yeah. um, so, so you have a combination of the breathing, visualization, and of course later on they progress to physical movements. So, uh, so everything is combined. Is there another stage to your healing process? Well, in the last stage, then you should have a balancing. Uh, you know, w once you kind of like uh, move the energy, clear the energy, right? And uh, s then at the the end stage is to balance things. So balance is usually done with visualization exercises, which involve breathing, say, in circular patterns. So the most common thing is something called microcosmic orbit, which is to balance the yin and yang energy of the body. So putting the two energies back in place. And one way to visualize that is to imagine inhaling, let's say, from the base of your spine, mm -hmm. up, up to back to the top of your head, to the uh, uh, upper palate, and as you exhale, back down, the front of the body back down to the base of the spine. This cr creates a circuit of breath, right? Sure. And, and that circuit, it means that the breathing up the back is the, is the governing vessel, which is all the yang energy in the body. Breathing down the front stimulates or, you like, or, or relates to the um, conception vessel, which is all the yin in the body. So circulating these two is like blending the two together. It's kind of like you mix them two until they both blend together in harmony. Um, what are some, uh, we're coming close to the end of the second segment here, just quickly, what are some of the factors that uh, attack our chi that we should know of? Or what tips do you have for people to keep their chi yeah. in harmony? Well, um, a lifestyle, uh, lifestyle. Uh, choices are very important. So people Dealing with your stuff? <laughs> dealing with your stuff. You have to get yeah. enough sleep. Um, you have to eat proper at, at proper times. You have to keep emotions at even keels. I mean, if you have lots of anger, you have to find a way to release this. Mm -hmm. And uh, people shouldn't be afraid of so-called so negative emotions. We cycle through them. Yeah. It's quite okay to feel a bit anger, envy, or anything. To allow yourself to feel uh, that absolutely. so then you can purge it. Absolutely. As much as joy and, and love and anything else, yeah. we as a human beings, we regularly cycle through all of the emotions. Gentlemen, you know, it's been a pleasure. Thank you right. so much. Thank you for, for having your, us. <laughs> for your time, <laughs> for your knowledge for your energy. Uh, is there a particular message you want to get across quickly about TCM? Well, I mean, uh, TCM is holistic medical system yeah. and uh, it deals with the whole person. So that deals with physicality, uh, emotions, and spiritual integration. And uh, if people really want to look into uh, dealing with their health issues holistically, it's a wonderful medical system to approach. And wonderful. Use Thank you so much, Thank gentlemen. You, Dr. We'll be back with uh, two ladies who practice energy medicine. Stay tuned. Thank you.
The opinions expressed in the following program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers or Rogers TV. Welcome back to Health Matters. We are talking about energy medicine, looking at energetic disturbances and alignment. I have two new guests for you. We have the ladies in the house now in studio, uh, Deborah Jones and Dr. Sabina DeVita. Please, if you have any questions uh, for the panel, please feel free to call us at 905-595-LIVE. All right, ladies, energy medicine. I want to feel your energy. Hey, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, talk okay. to me. What, what is the energy system from your perspective? Somebody take the question. <laughs> well, you go ahead, Deborah. <laughs> um, energy, um, no. well, I'm a Reiki master. Okay, um, what does that mean? Uh, Reiki master, I channel um, more of that chi energy into the body so that it's got more to use. Okay. Um, I'm also a chakra balancing practitioner, so I um, check for energetic disturbances in the energy system, and I can use um, movement to uh, unblock any flow and create a better flow in the seven major chakras in the body. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm also an axitonal realignment practitioner and that's to help you um, move forward rapidly in your life and connect you mm -hmm. more to source. So do you see energy? Do you s when you're looking at me, are you seeing stuff? Like, do I need to know something? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I don't see energy with my eyes, okay. but I do feel energy when I'm using my hands and I'll scan your body and I'll find energy areas that are depleted or excess and then I'll use energy movement to to balance that. Mm -hmm. And so you believe in intuition then? Yeah, yeah. we all okay. have it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely and the reason I asked that question because there was a huge study um, by Princeton University they did the Global Consciousness Project, I don't know if you've ever heard of this, where they took 40 computers devices and put them all over the planet and it fed back into uh, Princeton University and they were measuring our field of consciousness everybody mm -hmm. so on most days the readout would be just like this like because everyone's humming along you know I'm in my stuff you're in your stuff so not much is going on um, the unfortunate event of 9-11 okay it peaked us because yes. everyone mm -hmm. in the world was focused on the 9-11 you know the tragedy of 9-11 but what mm -hmm. was really interesting about this research was that the day before 9-11 happened on this consciousness project it peaked the entire world knew something was going to happen. That's how they interpret the data. So yes, I believe we are uh, all intuitive, intuitive and that, that <laughs> research project absolutely Perfect. proves it. So in terms of the field, you pick it up intuitively and Sabina, you have a camera that um, actually shows the field. So do you want to talk about um, I, I would love to. As a matter of fact, we'll, we'll be able to we'll show get the, the camera. camera up later. Yeah, we will, because I do have it here. It's a nice little portable unit. Okay. And uh, what I love about it, it's actually a, a tool. It's a technique. It's a technology mm -hmm. that was developed in Russia, mm -hmm. in St. Petersburg, uh, Dr. Konstantin Korotkov, okay. who developed this. And his main mission was to actually combine spirituality with science. Nice. And that's where we're going. Everything's converging. It, it is. Yeah. And so it's the very first time that we actually have an instrument mm -hmm. that truly measures energy systems. Okay, so let's put up a case study. Absolutely. Um, the uh, abuse study. It's a GDV uh, photo, and it's going to be a... Yes, it is. is it sexual a, abuse? Yes, this was okay. a sexual abuse case. And actually, uh, in the picture, from the side view, one can see a, quite an opening. Oh, it's, it's quite a wide gap. And, uh, and now it's actually it shows on both profiles. But in particular, this was a case of a woman mm -hmm. who actually knew about her sexual abuse. And she, she had done a lot of therapy, psychotherapy, emotional yeah. work, et cetera. And this is years later. And yet it still showed up in her field. Okay. So deep within her subconscious, so healing, this is still an, e an issue. Yeah, so healing is like an onion. There's layers and layers and layers that we need to peel through exactly. in order to finally get the root of it. Absolutely. Right? That's what you're saying. I, I am yeah. saying that. And, and so for her, what we did was, of course, bring it into her full awareness. Mm -hmm. Because really, truly, when we're talking about consciousness mm -hmm. and this whole shift in energy, it is about awareness. That's the first step. Mm -hmm. And what I love about this technology is that it's a way for people to actually see the mirror in front of them. Sure. It's an awareness tool. Yeah. I refer to it as their awareness mirror. Absolutely. So yeah. she did get to see it. She was quite surprised. And then I initiated a series of aromatic oils 
that she was inhaling and also applying on specific locations on her body, which we'll refer to as the chakra centers. And what happened at that point is a tremendous shift. So you used oils to patch up her energy field? Well, it was to actually stimulate a uh -huh. healing response within her own body. Right. And so, because the oils have a way of truly transmitting information via the, the, the limbic, through the limbic system, directly to the emotional center. That's what I love about the oils. The oil. They're and direct, and they're Deborah, direct. You use crystals mm -hmm. to help with energy healing. Yep. How do you use the crystals? I'm gonna get back to you sure. in just a moment. I just wanna know about these crystals because they're sitting right here and they're beautiful. <laughs> they are, they all have different energies and different purposes. And um, my favorite one, which uh, I didn't put out on the table right now, is actually a smoky quartz point. And when I find that the energy is very heavy or stuck or dense in, in a body system, I'll put that between their ankles and it'll pull the energy out. The crystal will pull that energy out and direct it into the ground. So someone like Sabina has this case that we're talking about from sexual abuse, mm -hmm. you would use the crystals to pull out that what? This negative energy or heavy energy, and I don't even need to know exactly what that is from. Uh -huh. I just sense an energy that needs to leave, that, that is not in their the highest good to stay there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And what actually is, is wonderful with what Deborah is saying yeah. is we have the way to actually see that happening. Mm -hmm. So the technology that I've been talking about with the, it's called, by the way, gas discharge visualization bioelectrography curlian camera. So I know it's a long name. Right. Uh, but what the beauty is, is that we can literally look at a before and after, no matter what type of healing, be it acupuncture, be it crystals, hands-on healing, Reiki, uh, the essential oils, which I mentioned earlier, it will show us the changes. So the photo that you had put up, the one that we had on the abuse, was that um, just the, the psychological field? Because I know our human, you know, our field, we have um, the psychological, we have the emotional, we have the mental, we have the spiritual, we have all these layers on our auric field. So what field was that that you were looking at? Well, actually, in her case, there were two major aspects within her field. And I know we don't have the picture perhaps in front of people at this point. Which picture? The, 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 the one we where- We can put it back up. The, no, please, the, that the would, it would be helpful. We're gonna put back up the abuse um, Because it, photo. it basically shows a, it a real wide gap, as you yeah. can see. And what I'm looking at are the colors of distribution in the field. Okay. There are basically four colors that we look at. The blue, yeah. the yellow, the uh, the reddish and the purplish. And they literally mean the emotional, the spiritual, and mental. So this went right through her field. Correct. You could see. She had it on all levels. So if she didn't heal this issue, this emotional issue and this trauma, um, what would result? Well, oftentimes... Are we looking at disease now? Absolutely. So do emotions... It's stagnant chi. It's you know, stagnant talking, chi. Right, so the, emotion, so the emotional trauma comes before the disease. Correct. Okay. That, that, that pretty well summarizes it. Yeah. So basically the idea of this is to bring it into awareness for someone to see it, yeah. and from that we can now initiate their own healing response. So with all of what we're doing, we're helping the body, we're facilitating the body to heal itself. Yeah, and what do you think about that? And that's exactly it. I mean, once they're aware, once the client is aware that there's yeah. something that needs work, yeah. Yeah. Um, whether it's visual proof or mm -hmm. just feeling energy leaving and knowing there was something there. Yeah. You know, as long as they're aware that there's, there's something happening, then they can work with that. Now, this often comes up. Um, people are afraid to deal with their stuff. Ladies, <laughs> you know, you know, I, I, I know many people who say, you know, yeah, I know I have these issues, and you know, in childhood, and this happened, that happened, but you know what? I'm moving forward in my life, and it, and it's there. But meanwhile, you know, they're showing signs of, of physical, uh, you know, degeneration in certain areas, and uh, but still, that's not enough for them. They don't want to deal with the stuff. So, do you see that in your practice? I do see that, and the mm -hmm. way what, what, that what, I what would be your message to people? Well, the way that I that I combat that is I create a safe space in which they can explore that for themselves. So, yeah. so the healing mm -hmm. can bring up emotions. The healing can um, have them see mm -hmm. what's going on in their life. Mm -hmm. And as they see the shifting, or as they they do release some of that um, energy, and then they see the change in their life. Like they, I just I tell them to look and see how you're dealing with things. If you're dealing with things differently, then you know that you're on a healing path and yeah. usually there's a different reaction to the same situation. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's bringing up their emotional IQ, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My message, too, yeah. in, to add to that is, is simply this, that it takes a lot more energy 
to actually suppress the issue. Thanks. Thank you I for mean, saying th that. This is yes. what's so alarming. Yeah. It's actually, they don't realize that. Exactly. Yeah. And, and there are so many what I'd like to, to, to term it as elegant ways mm -hmm. of releasing. Mm -hmm. And it is not the old traditional style of the Freudian psychoanalysis type therapy. This can be done in a matter of hours and it's done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Energy shifts. It's that fast. So mm -hmm. somebody with inner child issues, I know you use oil, so how does that work? How can you just give someone an oil and they smell it and, you know, they're healed? Well, the, 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 the beauty about any oil mm -hmm. is, is to understand how we work anatomically. The most direct sense of all the senses to the subconscious yeah. is through the here, smell, yeah. is smell. Yeah. So it's ten thousand times more powerful than that's any other. correct. And many people have have memories of walking into a room and maybe smelling something like baked cookies or bread, and all of a sudden thinking mm -hmm. of a childhood memory because that's how fast it is. So it brings up the memory, but then what? They have to process that somehow. That's the beauty about the oils, because as soon as that memory is brought into visual focus the body will initiate and move that energy and healing on its own. It's not the old traditional style. Is that what you're finding in your practice? Definitely, it, it's not hard work anymore. It, it's easy, it's, it's fast. Getting, it's fast mm -hmm. and it easier? Is. Yeah. So it it's costing people less money then? Well, <laughs> and the beauty is they can smell nice at the same time. <laughs> and it's toxic free. And it's toxic free, <laughs> which is another reason that I love using them so much because not only are they able to heal themselves, mm -hmm. but they are also able to use it because one of my projects, as, as I mentioned to you earlier, is in the environment and how to use it in the home for, mm -hmm. for cleaning. Using the oils. Using the oils. And at the same time while they're cleaning their, their refrigerator or their countertop, they're actually helping themselves to heal. Right, and it's lifting their vibration. Correct. And it's clearing their space energetically because there's a lot of things hanging out in the space. Exactly. That we probably won't talk about today. <laughs> that would be a whole other yes, show. <laughs> it is another show. I certainly would love to talk about it. I, have a, I, have, I certainly have a lot of passion for what's happening to the environment. So. <laughs> this is really interesting. Um, there's so much research about you know energy medicine. Uh, Dr. Harold Saxon Burr, uh, Yale University, he did yes. research way back when, looked at tiny seedlings and energetically mapped the adult plant from the seed um, showing the developmental template that we grow into and he did that with fish as well and so we have this energetic template um, you know which really you know, biologists always struggle to explain what keeps our skin together well it's our energetic template correct right there's grids if people could see mm -hmm. it yeah, yeah that, that's true. And, and, and the beauty is, again, coming back to the Curlian, the, 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 the bioelectrography uh, photographs that we take, we can actually see, and I refer to it as their template. It's a blueprint. You know, Sabina, we're going to hold that thought. We need to take a quick break, and uh, we'll be back on Health Matters. More uh, with Sabina and Deborah and Energy Medicine.
The opinions expressed in the following program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers or Rogers TV. Welcome back to Health Matters. Viewers, if you have any questions for my panel, please feel free to call in 905-595-LIVE. Uh, we're talking about energy medicine here with Dr. Sabina DeVita and Deborah Jones. All right, Deborah, what's the energy you work with? I work with universal energy. Okay, um, that's also, a big word. Also known as chi, <laughs> so we've been talking about it already, but uh -huh. um, it's what nourishes us. Mm -hmm. And so we need uh, five sources of energy to stay alive. Okay, so the first one would be uh, food, Mm -hmm. water, air, sunlight, yep. and universal energy. So if, we, if our uh, digestive system is clogged, we can't um, absorb the nutrients in the food. Um, if our lungs are blocked, we can't breathe. If we lack sunlight, our metabolic system can't function. And if our chakras are blocked, then we can't access that universal energy yeah. that's stored in our what energy system. What blocks us? Uh, there are lots are of things just that hung block up us. on our, our on our path. <laughs> <laughs> um, stress. Um, yeah. Just life isn't working well, or you're not following the path that you know you you want to be on, or you need to be on. Yeah. So there's lots of things that can get in our way. So what advice do you have to, uh, for people to um, you know help them at home to unblock? The blocks. Well, there's a very, this is a very <laughs> and easy. And let their energy flow. <laughs> there's a very easy uh, tip that I tell all my okay. clients, actually, and we can do it uh, now. And you can do it when you're at work, even if, you know, it's, it's not really the right place to do a meditation. But take yourself off to the bathroom and close your eyes and take the three deep breaths, just like Robert was talking, and have yeah. it come right in and right out. And when you're breathing in, you think in. And when you're breathing out, you think out. So what you're doing is you're taking the focus away from the stress. Right, you're removing yourself, exactly. becoming a witness. Exactly, mm -hmm. and so when you're thinking in and when you're thinking out, your mind is now focused on your breath and not the issue. And you're putting yourself in the moment and you're not getting caught up in all the small stuff. Exactly. Yeah, that's what happens to most people. Yeah. They get so zoned in and all the small stuff and then the anger happens and then they cycle through that, stimulus response, stimulus response, and it's like you need to remove yourself from that, create the, the space. Key. Yeah, that is the key. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and you could use oils, I'm sure, with Absolutely. this breathing technique. Do you want to show us? You have a, a raindrop technique. Yes, and and actually, uh, that is one of the techniques that we oh, use. Perfect. Is, do you is, want to is actually it is to is to do this deep breathing, okay. and we add to it, a, you know, specific types of oils, mm -hmm. mainly because of their frequencies because each of the oils have a frequency and they've been measured. Yep. And that's what's so exciting about this. Mm -hmm. So if I was to do something here with, with Deborah, mm -hmm. there is an oil blend that I love using that is actually one that has, is made up of four oils. Okay. And it's one that actually helps to calm the body and it's very simple to do. We actually just apply the oil. Do you want me to just, actually yeah, just, she would just mm -hmm. turn a little bit. Sure. And, and it's so simple, Every, anyone can do this anywhere. Okay. <laughs> We've done this even in airports. But we apply the oil in the palm of our hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I do have it here, but just to simplify yeah. it, it's just rubbing it three times in the palm of our hand, and then we just hold it, and may I just hold you mm -hmm. on the shoulders here. And basically, as I'm holding her shoulders, there is a frequency, mm -hmm. there is a bioelectric frequency of the oil, and of course in my hands and with her body. And so what is happening at this point is we have this triad of, in of information or triad of energy, and we just hold it. I don't need to do anything other than that, and guess what? She's <laughs> it, releasing? She'll start. <laughs> <laughs> and we've done this many, many, many times. Uh, pain releases, um, stiffness, the headaches. Because the oils happened. are working at the energetic at level. Energetic and the energetic level. level precedes the physical level. It's so correct. the energetic level is the source, which is correct. what you want to target, right? If you want to. Correct. Yeah. And that's how simple it is. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty about the oils. One of the. Uh, blessings about the uh, the techniques that we have is mm -hmm. a technique called raindrop technique okay. and and I do have my camera here to show as well so I'll explain how that works but raindrop technique was devised by and invented by Dr. Gary Young when he noticed that there was uh, problems of course and issues that were taking place along the spine and he had a set of oils that he would apply along the back and noticed that there were shifts and changes, but particularly. Okay. Hold on one second. We do have a caller on the line, uh, Tyler. Hello. So uh, my question is, 
if you were stepped into a machine, like this is like, a, let's say, in the distant future, and we were to clone ourselves, assuming that a person has a soul, what would happen to the person coming out of the machine? Well, consciousness lives on. I mean, you can't kill consciousness. So w go deeper with your question. What's mm -hmm. your real question? What do you want to know? Uh, well, my question is, is it just recreated from the per like, first person coming in? Are you asking about like reincarnation? So, like, if we were to, um, let's say, if you were to set the machine and clone yourself, what, well, like, assuming they have a soul, what would happen to the soul clone? Is it just duplicated? It's a good question. Well, it's a good <laughs> question. <laughs> Did you ask your spirit guides? Uh, no, I haven't really had any contact. <laughs> well, you might want to meditate on that one <laughs> yeah, and ask your spirit guides. Help them buy it. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Taylor. All right. Bye. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bye. Um, you know, one thing I wanted to mention uh, before we go on, mm -hmm. um, the greatest energy or the greatest power of all, and this might help Taylor out, um, is the power and energy of love. It's a four-letter word. It is the best medicine Absolutely. on the planet. It's love. Okay. And I'm going to give you an example. Um, his name is Dr. Hugh Len, Hawaii, Hawaii State yes. General Hospital. You know where I'm going yes, with this, I don't do. you? Yes, I do. I know his okay. story. Quick story for our home viewers. Um, yes. He practices what's called Hopo Ono Pono. Yes. Try saying that five times yes, faster, that's okay? Basically, this is a Hawaiian prayer. He's a kahuna. He's also um, a therapist. Hawaii State General Hospital hired him to um, help with his patients. They were aggressive, violent, rapists, um, you name it. And these people were in shackles. They were medicated, heavily sedated, uh, very violent. There was a high turnover of staff. Nobody wanted to go to work. So they hired him to you know, help rehabilitate this ward. He took the case files, never saw any of the, of the people, any of the inmates. Mm -hmm. He looked at the case and said, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, yes. and thank you. Yes. For each case he did, the, it took him four years. He practiced his pet prayer. This is called 100% responsibility, meaning that he had a shared experience with these inmates. So from his perspective, he was like, why are these people showing up in my life? What's in me? What's the data plan in me that's perceiving these people? And if I erase my data plan, then these Correct. people can't be this way. That's right. So it's about erasing yourself back to zero where true inspiration, where the true love can come forth. Otherwise, we are just stuck in stimulus response day in and day out. It's like living Groundhog Day every day, right? Just new Absolutely. faces. Absolutely. Um, Power of love, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, and thank you. This is how he rehabilitated the ward. Before you knew it, well, four years, um, the shackles were off, these aggressive men were baking cookies, and now <laughs> the ward is closed. Perfect. Yes. Okay? Yes. A drug-free rehabilitation model and a love-based model. So when you talk about energy medicine, yeah. my message to get out is that love is the medicine. Absolutely, I totally agree with you. May I add to that, uh, that this technology right here actually was involved with a number of those type of experiments where they actually did before and afters. Intention, particularly Lynn McTaggart's work, on the intention experiment mm -hmm. uh, in the field, they actually did this with water, where they had water in another country, and this was done telepathically, mm -hmm. and focused, again, mm -hmm. love, the frequency love. of love, yep. and they measured before and measured the water afterwards. Well, what do you think happened? Yeah, well, it's like, it Dr. Changed. It's like Dr. Emoto's Emoto, yeah. Correct. What to Bleep experiment. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. Correct, but this was done via telepathic, which is a little bit different because mm -hmm. we didn't have to freeze the water. This was done with a droplet of water over the camera lens, yeah. and then it takes a picture. So interesting. You know, so it's fascinating. It is very it is fascinating. fascinating. One of the things, Deborah, I want to ask you, mm -hmm. um, indigo children, crystal children, how important is it, I want to know first of all, what are they, and uh, how important is it to teach our children these days of our energy system? Because mm -hmm. it is a system missing from the textbooks. <laughs> yes, it is, but the interesting thing is it those is. children, and, yeah. and the indigo children are born in the 1980s, uh, 1980s, not 1880s, um, and they kind of paved the way for the crystal children born in the late 1990s um, to actually um, show us 
way, where we're moving to so they um, know about telepathic communication. Mm -hmm. um, these children all know about the energy system just intrinsically in, mm -hmm. in the system they know this. Um, there's a new generation. And it's about their parents showing them, you know, I mean when I practice Qigong, I mean you can feel the energy in between your hands and mm -hmm. just teaching our kids, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean some, like when I just do this, I can feel, you know, the en like where it's moving. So it's about directing our energy and using our intention to direct. Correct. It's true, but there's, they, they already get it. They already know it, and they're not a hard sell. Yeah. You know, we're trying to they're understand sell, it, yeah, like and they're trying to teach it's us. Hard so selling, that's true. That's true. It's hard selling people good health. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'd like to add to that, too, that, w that what we're looking at right at the moment mm -hmm. on the planet is an mm -hmm. increase in light. Mm -hmm. We are going through the photon belt. I mean, we're going through a very, very key time astronomically. And this is something that I'd like our viewers to really pay attention Good. to. Good. We're coming down to the last minute, ladies. So, so mm -hmm. my, 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 certainly my message here is definitely love to be in our hearts. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be felt from our hearts. And coming back, because I certainly love my oils, but the, <laughs> the re issue here really is to understand that we're all light. We are made of light. Well, we're made we're of the photons of light. So yeah. photons are light. Yeah. So we have this increase of light. We have this increase of photons. And so the more that we can utilize mm -hmm. uh, areas in our life, such as with the oils, that really help to Lift increase yeah. the photons, we are doing mm -hmm. such a well, major it's, it's raising our cellular uh, vibration. Absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. And Absolutely. All, that's what energy healing is all about. Raising your vibration. Yeah. Exactly. Any last final tips you have for viewers, Deb? Um, just going back to um, the children um, yeah. with, with the um, being able to uh, read each other's minds, there won't be any need for lies. So we're going to be heading into a world of truth, which is really exciting. Yeah, everybody purging their fears. Yep. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> then we can all be light beings. That's right. <laughs> well, and I think we'll also see another magical, I, I think, phenomenon take place. And that is, and this is just a really key statement, that all disease originates from consciousness. It does. And I'm going to stop you right there. Because that's, that's going to lead me into the ending. Thank you, fabulous. ladies, so much for your time, <laughs> your you. knowledge, your You're energy. <laughs> and thank you to home viewers uh, for tuning into Health Matters. I'm going to leave you with a quote by Charles F. Hano, author of The Master Key System, who said, when you come to know that every form of disease, sickness, lack, and limitation is simply due to wrong thinking, you will have come to know the truth, and that will set you free. Mm -hmm. I will see you next week on Health Matters. Yes. Any final quotes? Well, I think I've given mine at this point, so uh, it's all in the field. and uh, All in the field. That's it. The field is reality, as Albert Einstein. Life is what you believe. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Thanks, ladies. Okay. Thank, Thank you. You're welcome.